In this video, I'm gonna share eight tips for using SketchUp with your laser cutter. Now, this video is sponsored by Xtool, so I'm excited to show you the laser they sent me to play around with later on in this video. Now, this is gonna cover uh, SketchUp Free, SketchUp Pro, basically any version of SketchUp, I'm gonna share some tips on how to get your model um, to your laser cutter. So first, let's jump into SketchUp Free. So with SketchUp Free, you can export basic shapes to be cut on your laser cutter. So if you have a basic shape like this, and then you can go to the menu, go to download, download an STL file. And then what we're gonna do is go to Tinkercad, create an account on tinkercad.com. You'll import that STL file. Make sure you select the units that you uh, used in SketchUp, just so it imports at the correct size. And then from here, just go to export and for laser cutting SVG. So you're gonna download the SVG and then you can import that into your laser cutting software. So I'm using Lightburn here uh, in this video just because it's kind of like the industry standard from what I'm understanding uh, for, for laser cutters. Now, a lot of laser cutters will have their own specialty software, including Xtool. They have the creative space, which is pretty decent, but it doesn't have anywhere near the advanced features as Lightburn. Now, the big drawback with this is it's just recognizing cutting out shapes. It's not allowing you to uh, provide like engraving lines or fill lines to fill in shapes with your laser. So then we move on to tip number two, and that's if you're using SketchUp Pro or SketchUp Go, you'll have the ability to use these export options. So you can export directly to DXF without having to go to Tinkercad or anything else to convert the file. Now, a couple things you need to know about exporting to DXF. Um, first of all, I just wanna note here, you can just draw on a 2D plane. I know you might think that's kind of weird to like, why would you not use the 3D features in SketchUp? But there's really a lot of great features in SketchUp just with like components and being able to drag um, arrays and things like that, uh, where it actually still makes sense to use SketchUp as a 2D tool in, in a lot of instances. And before we export it, we just need to go to the scenes. We need to do a, a top view and a parallel projection. And so now we can go to export DXF 2D and for export options, we wanna be full scale and we don't want profile lines or section lines or showing extensions. So we'll click export and SketchUp for web will process this in the cloud and we'll give you this little prompt here when it's all done. So you just click download and when we import it in Lightburn, we now have the edges that we can use to uh, cut as well as the interior edges that we can use to engrave. Now, the thing that's a little tricky is uh, differentiating cuts versus engraves. So Lightburn uses colors in order to differentiate that. In this case, this is kind of easy because I welded together this, uh, this perimeter line. So um, it was pretty easy to you know just select it and change the color to indicate that I want that to be cut versus engraved. But a lot of times if you have a lot of geometry in here, it can be kind of tricky to select all of that inside Lightburn. This video is sponsored by Xtool. They sent me this D1 Pro, which is a professional grade 20 watt diode laser that can engrave and cut wood, metal, paper, cardboard, leather, acrylic, and more, and features a 400 millimeter per second max speed, limit switches for absolute positioning, flame and tilt detection for safety, rotary and air assist compatibility, and built-in Wi-Fi. I'm gonna do a full review on the D1 Pro in another video, but you can check the link in the description right now to get your own D1 Pro to get the best deal available and start laser cutting today. So tip number three is how to differentiate edges in SketchUp using colors. That way when you import it into Lightburn, they can be differentiated between cut lines and engrave lines. So to do that, we'll go back to SketchUp. So what a lot of people don't know is you can actually assign materials to edges directly. But first what you need to do is change some style settings so you can see the colors that are assigned to them instead of the default, which is all edges are black. So open up the styles panel and then you're gonna click on the edit style. You're gonna expand the edge settings here. We're gonna change this from all same to by material and then make sure you click done to apply those changes. 
And now we can grab the paint bucket tool by expanding the materials panel here. And we can search for a color. So red is typically used to indicate uh, cut lines. And then we can just go around and click on the edges to apply materials directly to them. Now you might have some trouble like I am right here where I'm accidentally hitting the face. Um, I'm gonna do a little shortcut here and just double click the, the face. Um, so all the perimeter edges become selected as well. I'll hold down shift, click the face to deselect it. And then right in the entity info uh, panel, I'll just click on the material and assign it directly just like that. So now all of my perimeter edges have this red color applied. And so now when I export this, I'll do the same thing, DXF 2D. And when I import it into Lightburn, now the colors are automatically applied for us to differentiate between cutting and engraving. So that's a great way to assign the type of path, the type of cut or engrave that you want right inside of SketchUp without having to do any post-processing in Lightburn. And my fourth tip is with groups and components, you need to be careful with overlapping edges because Lightburn and pretty much every other uh, laser software will have the laser go over edges, even if they overlap each other, it'll go over those edges twice. So while it is helpful to use components to create duplicate uh, geometry throughout a project, you just need to make sure that you explode them at the end before you export that to DXF. That way the edges will merge with one another and you don't get those duplicate edges. But for instance, let's say I wanted to add a little fill inside each of these hexagons. Well, I organized these into components. So every one of these hexagons is just a copy of the same component. So, so I can go ahead and use the offset tool and offset something to the center. Now I just delete the faces just so they don't uh, fight with the face of the main object underneath. Um, but let's say we want to assign this a third color to indicate a fill. So we'll, we'll assign that yellow. So before exporting this, I just need to make sure to select all of these components and right click explode. And now it merges any overlapping edges. So there's just one copy of these shared edges throughout the whole thing. Now I can leave this group as is because it's not intersecting or overlapping any other edges in the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this again as a 2D DXF. So if I import that into Lightburn, you can see we now have three different layers here or different cut styles. So we have the uh, the red cut, the black engrave, and then we have the yellow one here, which I can uh, assign to fill. And so now if I go to a preview, I can show you what this will look like. So it'll start out by doing the engraving and then it'll do the cut, which I'm realizing is not good. Uh, and then it goes to fill. So previews are great because it gives you the opportunity to realize uh, potential mistakes before you ruin a piece of material. So I'm just gonna move this up so that it does the engraving first, the fill next, and the cutting last. And now when I run through the uh, preview, we can see it does the engraving, the fills, and then the last step is cutting out the perimeter. Tip number five is how to get true circles and arcs uh, from your export. So let's say instead of a polygon here, I had a circle. So let's say I had a 12 sided circle here. If I exported this as a 2D DXF, when I import that into Lightburn, you'll notice that all of the circles are segmented just like they are in SketchUp. Now, alternatively, you can export a 3D DXF and make sure you uncheck faces. You basically just want to have the edges here. Click export. And when you import that into Lightburn, you'll notice that the circles are true circles. They're not segmented. So this will do the same thing for arcs. So if you need to have uh, perfectly round circles, you need to export as a 3D DXF. Just be careful with polylines. So um, at one point I had this I had these edges welded together 
And when I exported that to Lightburn, they actually didn't import at all. Um, and it wasn't even a Lightburn thing. It was like a DXF thing. If I if I tried to view the DXF, that those lines just weren't there at all. So there seems to be an issue with like polylines or like welded um, polylines. Um, so just make sure you explode those if you do see some missing uh, missing edges that you expect to be there. Now, tip number six is modeling in 3D and converting that for your laser cutter. So we're gonna jump into SketchUp Pro for this one because there's a couple of extensions I wanna share with you for making this easier. Now, the most obvious kind of straightforward thing to do is, you know, once you're done modeling something, this is something I found on the 3D warehouse, um, just manually taking each component, grabbing the move tool, you know, bringing it out, rotating it and kind of getting it flattened down um, in a single plane like this. So you're gonna select everything you flattened and then you go to file, export, 2D graphic and kind of follow the same process that we went over earlier with exporting a 2D DXF. So tip number seven is using a free extension called Face SVG. So what this allows you to do is right click a face go to the context menu and select layout SVG profile. And it creates this new group on the ground plane near the origin um, that you can then export. So you do have to just kind of go through the model and select the various faces that you want to include. And it'll just add this additional uh, profile to the special group that it's created. So I could go through the model and kind of do that again for every single um, face here. Uh, another option is to just export a unique profile for each one since these are all duplicates and then just kind of duplicate them inside of Lightburn. But basically once you're all done, you can just go to the context menu and select write SVG profile. It'll create an SVG that you can then import into Lightburn. And finally, tip number eight is another extension called Faber, which is kind of made more specifically for CNC, but you can use it for lasers too. So the thing that's really cool about Faber is it's really kind of just hands off. Uh, there's one button, you click it, it exports the SVG, gives you a little summary here. And if I import that into Lightburn, you can see we have all of the pieces laid out here. Now the free version does not have nesting, but uh, you can upgrade to get more jobs per month and you know nesting capability built in, but you can always just kind of manually move stuff around to nest it properly on your bed. And there's another website called deepnest.io that is free and can nest objects for you as well. So you can check that out. I'll have links in the description for that. So Faber is by far the easiest solution for uh, modeling in 3D and exporting it for your laser. Um, the only thing you have to really look out for is make sure you have the blue axis oriented in the direction of the thickness of your material. So that's really the only catch with this you have to have the blue axis oriented correctly in order for Faber to work. All right, so I'll have links in the description for all the stuff that I mentioned in this video. I hope this was helpful. There's a lot of different ways you can use lasers with SketchUp. And if you wanna check out the Xtool D1 Pro, which is the laser that Xtool sent to me, you can check that out in the links in the description as well. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.